I'm going to walk you through weak, strong titration problems in this video. We're going to look at how a weak, strong titration is different from a strong, strong, and then also uh, see how to calculate the pH at different parts of uh, the titration curve. It's definitely going to be a little bit different from strong, strong titration problems. All right, so the first thing to notice here is that, you know, the pH at the equivalence point of a weak, strong is not going to be at seven. If you have a strong, strong titration, the pH at the equivalence point is seven. But here, all right, in this example, if we're doing a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. So the weak acid is in the flask, all right? The weak acid is our analyte. For these weak, strong ones, for us, the weak one is going to be the analyte and the titrant will be the strong. So if this is a weak acid being titrated with a strong base, okay, the equivalence point for this one would be greater than seven because the base is stronger. It's going to pull the pH up a little bit at the equivalence point. And we'll look at why that happens as well. There's going to be three major differences here uh, when looking at the titration curves if you're comparing a strong, strong and a weak, strong titration. First, the uh, initial acidic pH is a little bit higher. It's going to be less acidic here. So if you look at the titration curve here for this weak acid strong base, it's going to be a little bit higher on um, the pH level here on the y-axis. Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't always have to be this high. You can still see some weak, strong titrations here where the pH is pretty low. Uh, but a lot of times here, uh, you will have a little bit higher pH, a little bit less acidic because it is a weak acid here. And obviously, if you were doing a weak uh, base with a strong acid, you would start a little less basic as well. Another difference is that you're going to see a smaller change in pH near the equivalence point. So the jump here at the equivalence point is not going to be that great. All right. If you look down here at the bottom, you can see the differences here between these. The weak acid titration starts a little bit higher pH, and you can see the jump at the equivalence point is definitely uh, way less for a weak acid strong base titration. And obviously here we know the pH at the equivalence point is going to be a little bit higher. If the equivalence point is right here in this weak strong, you can see it's definitely above seven here. And we know that this one is above seven because the base is the strong one. If this was a, a weak base strong acid, it would be below seven. All right, so definitely be aware of these three major differences here when we're doing our weak acid strong base titration. We are going to start working through one of these weak strong titration problems. This is what we will actually start doing here. Uh, we're going to have the addition of 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide solution from a burette into a flask containing 25 milliliters of 0 0.10 molar uh, acetic acid. And we're given the Ka for the acetic acid. Realize here, again, this is why you need to know which of those acid and bases are strong. You need to be able to look at this and say, okay, this is a strong base, and then this is a weak acid. So we're doing a weak acid titrated with a strong base. The strong base is in the burette. You need to really get into the habit here of writing your reactions, and you don't need to necessarily write them all at once. You kind of can write them where you need them in the problem, uh, but realize here when you're doing the uh, acetic acid reacting with NaOH, that's a neutralization reaction an acid reacting with a base here. So you can see you get your salt plus water. Notice the arrow. It's a forward arrow here. All right, so that's important. Uh, eventually though, you will have um, an equilibrium reaction here involving the weak acid itself. There will also be another reaction to consider here uh, at the equivalence point with the salt. So we actually could end up having three reactions we have to write here. Always write your initial titration reaction first, make sure it's all one-to-one, -one, and then eventually we'll write the other reactions that we need to. Keep in mind here, pay attention to the difference in the arrows. When you have a weak dissociating into its ions, it's not a forward arrow, it's an equilibrium. And then when we have another hydrolysis reaction with the salt at the equivalence point, that will be an equilibrium arrow as well. So just be aware of this. Uh, you need to realize here though, something I wanna point out right away, the salt that forms here, okay, we're forming 
sodium acetate in this process. All right, look where it came from. It came from a strong base, weak acid. So this salt is going to react with water to produce a basic pH at the equivalence point. For a strong, strong titration, we didn't need to worry about the salt hydrolyzing at the equivalence point because the salt came from a strong, strong. It didn't hydrolyze with water. But now in a weak, strong titration, the salt will hydrolyze to contribute to the pH here. So at the equivalence point, we actually have to do one of those uh, salt uh, equilibrium problems. So we'll look at that as we go through this. But just get used to uh, writing your reaction. Definitely write the uh, you know neutralization reaction for the overall problem first. And then you will have some other reactions here to pay attention to in these weak, strong titrations. Just like we went through the different regions of the curve for a strong, strong titration, we're going to do the same thing now for a weak, strong titration, all right? We're going to look at the pH initially here first, and then we'll work our way through the other regions. And you're going to see there's going to be some uh, differences here uh, compared to a strong, strong titration. And you need to keep this straight in your mind uh, that this is a weak, strong titration, and these are the steps you would need to do at each of these different regions. We already know this is the problem we're doing here. Uh, we're looking at a weak acid in our flask being titrated with the strong base, NaOH here. Uh, and if we want to find the pH before any NO, NaOH is added. So this would be determining the pH here initially. All right. Well, think about it. In a strong, strong problem, the uh, analyte was a strong acid or base. So you just needed to do the negative log of the concentration. But here in a weak, strong problem, the analyte is going to be weak. So you can't just do the negative log of the concentration. You have to set up a weak equilibrium uh, problem here and actually do an ice table. So we need to look at uh, the weak acid and set up an ice table to be able to do this. So if we're trying to find the pH before we add any of this OH, the only substance present in the flask is the weak acid, acetic acid. All right. In order to determine the pH of that, you're going to need to determine the concentration of H+. But because it doesn't dissociate 100% because it's weak, we need to do our ice table and our equilibrium here. So the uh, acetic acid, the HC2H3O2, is going to be in equilibrium here with its ions, H+, plus, plus the C2H3O2 minus. All right, set up our ice table. Uh, initially here, they told us the concentration of our acetic was 0 0.10 molar. There's not going to be any of our products present initially. We need to think about the change here in terms of X. Reactant's going to be loosed up, uh, used up, so it's minus X. Both products are plus X. Now we can write our concentrations at equilibrium. We have 0 0.10 minus X molar for the acetic acid here. Uh, we have X molar for each ion. Uh, write your Ka just like you would here for a normal uh, problem. Products over reactants, so concentration of H plus uh, times concentration of C2H3O2 minus all over uh, the concentration here of your reactant, your HC2H3O2. All right, so now we have our Ka. Let's plug in what we know. We know the Ka here is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And that's going to be equal to x squared all over the 0 0.10 minus x. Uh, it's a weak problem, so we're going to do the x approximation here. Do your math. Solve for x. Hopefully, you get x being equal to 0 0.0013. One three molar. Remember, this is the concentration of your H plus here. All right. So if we want to find the pH of this, now we do pH equals negative log of the concentration of H plus. So we're going to have negative log here of the 0 0.0013. And when we do the math, it comes out to be 2.89. So our initial pH here before we add any NaOH is 2.89. So anytime you're doing one of these weak, strong titrations, initially, because you're dealing with a weak, you're going to have to do an ice table uh, for the weak 
acid or base here in order to figure out the pH. So it's definitely different than a strong strong. Understand the differences here and realize that it, it is a little bit more work here for initially for a weak strong. You need to know what to do here uh, for each of the different types and at each of the different points on the curve. Now we're ready to look at the next region of the curve here. We know how to find the pH initially in a weak strong. Now we need to see what happens. How do we figure out the pH when we add one drop up into the equivalence point here? And it's going to be a little bit more involved than what we saw in a strong strong. So if we want to find the pH here after we have added 10 milliliters of NaOH, I haven't reached the equivalence point yet. Again, if you were doing this in a normal problem and you weren't sure if you reached the equivalence point, you would quickly find out when you found the moles of each, you would see that you have a certain amount of uh, moles of acid here to start and you didn't add enough moles of the base to neutralize it. So you would know you weren't at the equivalence point yet. Uh, but this is uh, the basic steps you need to follow here in order to do um, a weak strong titration when you're at the point where you're after initial, but you haven't reached the equivalence point yet. And you need to understand that these are the steps you follow in this region. So there's going to be some similarities, but there's definitely some new stuff here that we got to even talk about a little bit more. So the first thing you're going to do is find the moles of NaOH added. We did that uh, before in a strong, strong problem. So that's not anything new. Then you find the number of moles of acid you started with. Again, not anything new. Because you're not at the equivalence point yet, you still have uh, acid remaining. You haven't added enough NaOH to neutralize all of the acid. So you subtract and figure out the number of moles of your acid still remaining. So that's pretty much the same here uh, that we did for a strong strong. But now there's some differences. Then you need to figure out the number of moles of the weak base that formed. Right, so what's happening here is you're having a reaction take place and you're generating, okay, a conjugate here. And that conjugate, that weak base conjugate, the salt essentially, is going to be important here. And then what we're going to do, we're going to determine the concentration of our acid remaining. That's pretty similar to before. But we're also going to need to figure out the concentration of the weak base that we formed. Because what's happening here is, we are actually forming something called a buffer in this region. So we need to take these concentrations and plug them into something called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in order to find the pH. So we have to talk about this a little bit more and see what's happening, but you need to understand when you're doing a weak strong problem, from the moment you add a drop up to the equivalence point, you're in a buffering region, all right? So you have to essentially do a buffer problem here. These are the basic steps. We'll definitely walk through this and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation that you need to use. Here are the two different versions of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, depending on whether you're doing a pH, dealing with kind of uh, an acid here, a weak acid, or whether or not you're dealing with a pOH and a weak base. So you can see here for the pH version, the pH is equal to the pKa, all right, plus, the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of your acid here. So if you're doing, this is just easy to remember, if you're doing the pH version, obviously you need the pKa because we're dealing with the acid and the acid goes on the bottom here. Uh, the good news is, is that this is on your equation sheet, uh, but the pOH version is not. You just need to realize here that for pOH, you're dealing with a base, so you have a pKb, and the base, the concentration of the base, is on the bot. We use this equation for buffers. We have to do a whole section yet on buffers, uh, but in order to understand what we're doing here, we might as well define what a buffer is. A buffer is any time you have a weak acid or base and its conjugate. So if you have a weak acid present with its conjugate base, that forms a buffer. If you have a weak base present, with its conjugate acid, that forms a buffer here. Buffers just resist changes in pH. So we're gonna talk more about this in the next section, but realize here, anytime you have a weak with its conjugate, that's a buffer. And the reason we need to use it here in these problems is because when you haven't reached the equivalence point yet, all right, we still have some of that weak acid present. 
the acetic acid in this problem is still here, but we formed conjugate in the process. We have the weak acid present now with its conjugate. That's a buffer, all right? So anytime you're in this region, from you added the first drop of your titrate up to the equivalence point in a weak, strong titration only, you have this buffering uh, region, and you're going to have to do a buffer problem here using one of these equations. So let's start attacking this problem now. So we've added 10 milliliters of NaOH. We're still using this scenario up here. So we need to figure out the number of moles of NaOH you added. This is just like before in a strong, strong problem. So, you know, calculate that. It's a pretty easy calculation. You're going to find the number of moles of acid you started with. Again, this is the same as before. Uh, there's nothing new here. The key is, if you weren't sure if you were at the equivalence point, you now know that you're not, all right? You have this much acid that needs to be neutralized. You've only added that much base. You still have acid remaining, so you're not at the equivalence point yet, but you've started adding titrant, so now you're in this buffering region. So find the moles of each first, and then we got to take this a little bit further here. You need to think a little bit here about what's happening with the actual reaction. So think about this. We added 0 0.0010 moles of NaOH, but that means now it reacted with and destroyed that exact same amount because this is one-to-one. -one. This is why writing your reaction is important. It destroyed that exact amount of your acetic acid in the process. They reacted and they destroyed that much, all right? So definitely write your overall reaction here for the titration because it can actually help you uh, when you're doing the problem. So if you added that many moles of NaOH, you're going to destroy that same amount of the uh, weak acid here, in this case, the acetic acid in the process. You'll take the amount of the acid you started with, subtract the amount of base that you added because that's destroying uh, that amount of acid here, and this is how many moles of acid you have left over. But now you need to think about this again here. If you added that many moles of NaOH, all right, and it reacted with your acetic acid, look at the reaction on the previous slide. That means you must have formed that much of your conjugate here, okay? So pay attention to your, your balanced equation. It's all one to one. If this many moles of NaOH reacted with the uh, weak acid, acetic acid here, you're going to form that many moles of the product as well, all right? Well, your product here was, one of the products was the sodium acetate. You need to realize that the C2H3O2 minus part of that is the conjugate base of your weak acid, acetic acid. If this is your acetic acid here, if that's your uh, acid, the conjugate base of that is the C2H3O2 minus part here, all right? So you have to consider how much of the conjugate formed here. This definitely requires a little bit of thought. If you're destroying a certain amount of NaOH, according to the balanced equation, it's reacting, you're going to form that same amount of your product. But in this case, in a weak, strong problem, okay, that product that you're forming is a conjugate base of the weak acid in the problem. So now we have this buffering region we need to worry about. I know how many moles of my weak acid are remaining. I know my new total volume here. All right, remember, we're going to need concentrations here. You got to drill that into your head. We need concentrations to be able to plug in to that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, just like we need concentrations to do pH. So this is how many moles of the weak acid are remaining over my new total volume. You got to get it to liters. Remember, we need moles per liter. So this is the concentration of the weak acid that is still remaining. But remember, in the process here, we formed its conjugate base in the reaction. So we said on the previous slide, that's how many moles of the conjugate base that formed here, the C2H3O2 minus. It's also floating around in that new volume of 35 milliliters here, converted to liters, moles over liters. This is the concentration of the uh, acetate ion that's still remaining here, or that formed, I should say. 
So now you need to think about this. You have a certain amount of your weak acid present with a certain amount of its conjugate base. That is the definition of a buffer. Anytime you have a weak present with its conjugate, you have a buffer. So we have to figure out, like we did, the concentration of your weak acid remaining and the concentration of your conjugate that form. So that we can take these values now and plug them into that henderson hasselbalch equation. You must do this every time you are in this region from when you added one drop up to the equivalence point. It's this buffering region in these weak, strong problems. Remember here, we have a weak acid in the problem. So we're going to be using the pH version here of the henderson hasselbalch equation. The weak acid is what's still remaining. So you have to use the pH version. So this is the equation we're going to use here. We got the pKa and the concentration of the acid over on the bottom here. So in order to do this, you need to find your pKa. They gave us the Ka. So we know pKa is equal to the negative log of Ka. When you do the negative log of Ka, you get the pKa being 4.74. So now we can plug that in along with the concentration of our conjugate base and the acid here to solve for the pH. When we plug in our values, just remember the concentration of the acid goes on the bottom. This is the pH version. So the concentration of your acid still remaining goes on the bottom and the concentration of your conjugate goes on the top. All right. Remember, we have a weak acid still remaining in the presence of its conjugate base. So this is a buffer. When you do the math here, I would make sure you can do the math. The pH does come out to be 4.55. So you can see here, anytime you're in this buffering zone for a weak, strong titration, it is a little bit more work. It is definitely a little bit more thinking here. It's not as easy as a strong, strong problem. But you have to be aware of these are the steps I must do. You have to identify the region you're in uh, in the problem, figure out where you're at, and then make sure you follow the correct steps and do the buffer problem here. All right. You would not do this for a strong, strong. This is only for this zone from adding one drop up to the equivalence point in a weak, strong titration. The next region we need to look at here for a weak, strong titration is what do we do at the equivalence point? Remember, for a strong, strong titration, this was easy. The pH at the equivalence point was 7. That's not going to be the case here for a weak, strong problem. It's going to be uh, a little bit more work. You're going to have to do an ice table here, and we really need to think about what's going on at the equivalence point in a weak, strong titration. If we want to find the pH at the equivalence point of a weak, strong titration, First of all, obviously, in this case, we would need to add 25 milliliters of NaOH. Uh, in this problem, they both have the same concentration. So in order to reach the equivalence point where the moles of acid equal moles of base, you would need to add the exact same amounts. So I'd need to add 25 milliliters of NaOH in order to reach that equivalence point. All right? You need to realize that you're at the equivalence point here because the amount of acid uh, equals the amount of base. So the moles of acid equal the moles of base. But the problem is here we're not going to form a neutral salt. Think about it. At the equivalence point, the acid and the base have completely neutralized each other. So they're not present. The only thing that's uh, present at the equivalence point is going to be the salt that formed plus water. But the problem here is in a weak, strong titration, the salt that forms will hydrolyze with water. In a strong, strong, the salt that formed came from a strong acid and a strong base. So it did not hydrolyze with water. So it was much easier at the equivalence point for a strong, strong. Here, we need to think about which part of the salt is going to hydrolyze with water and which pH will form, right? So it definitely requires a little bit more thinking, but you've seen problems like this before. So it's not really a new problem. It just requires you to think here. Here are the steps you would follow to find the pH at the equivalence point. You would find the moles of NaOH you added. This is pretty standard. We know how to do this. Um, you would need to determine, though, the moles of your weak base that form. All right. So you basically need to figure out here how many moles of your conjugate, how many moles of the salt formed here in the process. Because remember, there's no more acid or base left. They've destroyed each other. You have to then find the concentration of that uh, weak base, of that conjugate that you formed here in the process. You will need to set up an ice table with the equilibrium and do your hydrolysis reaction. So essentially, part of the salt 
that forms is going to hydrolyze and react with water to give us um, or contribute here to the pH. Uh, in this particular example, because we're doing a weak acid with a strong base, the base is stronger. So at the equivalence point here, the salt, all right, think about it, the salt came from a weak acid, strong base, all right, the pH is going to need to be in the basic region. So we're going to need to form OH minus. So for this particular example, we would need a KB, um, and we're going to actually have to determine the pH from the POH, right? But you need to realize here, and this is just something to drill into your mind, when you're doing a weak, strong titration, at the equivalence point, you have a hydrolysis reaction taking place with the salt. It's not going to be neutral. There's going to be a hydrolysis reaction taking place with the salt that formed. And these are the steps you need to follow. So let's look at what this would look like uh, for this problem. The first thing we need to do to find the pH at the equivalence point of a weak strong is determine the number of moles of the uh, NaOH we added here. We've done this before. This is not anything new. Milliliters to liters, use your molarity, get the number of moles of NaOH you added. All right, if you weren't sure if you were at the equivalence point, you would know because you would compare this to the number of moles of the acid you started with here and you'd see they were equal, all right? So if you weren't sure, you would see that this number of moles is equal to the number of moles of acid you started with. So moles of acid equal moles of base at the equivalence point. So think about this now in terms of the reaction. If that's how many moles of NaOH you added and that's how many moles of the weak acid you started with, it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. They've destroyed each other, but you're going to form that exact amount here of the uh, salt, all right? So now you know that's how much of the salt that formed. If that's how much the base you added and it was equal to the amount of acid you started with, they've destroyed each other, but because of the one-to-one -one ratio, that's the exact amount here of the salt that formed, all right? But that salt came from a uh, weak acid, strong base. So you have to be in your head saying, okay, part of the salt is going to hydrolyze here to give me a basic pH because the base that it came from was strong. You're going to form a basic pH. So if I want to form OH minus, the minus part of the salt is going to be important here. The minus part of the salt, the C2H3O2 minus, is going to hydrolyze with the water to give us OH minus, all right? So realize here, you essentially know that that's the number of moles of this that formed, but it's a, an ionic uh, solid here. It's going to dissociate in water, it's one to one. So if that's the number of moles of your product that formed, that's the number of moles of each ion. So now we know the number of moles here of this C2H3O2 minus that formed. Again, I'm only focusing on the uh, C2H3O2 minus because I know that I need to generate OH minus here. So the minus part of the salt is going to react with water to give me OH minus. The biggest thing here that you cannot mess up, you have the number of moles of the uh, conjugate here that form. You need to be in concentration. In order to do an ice table, you must be in concentration. People always forget this step. You know the number of moles of your C2H3O2 minus that formed, you have to put it over your new amount of milliliters here. 25 and 25 was 50 milliliters. Sometimes in one of these weak, strong problems, you might have to do a little bit of math initially to figure that out. And we'll see examples with this. So now you have moles over milliliters, right? Get it to liters. Now you have the concentration of the C2H3O2 minus here. Again, I'm only focusing on that part of the salt because I know the minus part is going to hydrolyze with water to form OH minus, all right? I need to form base here because at the equivalence point, it's going to be a little bit more basic since it was a weak, strong base problem, all right? Just don't forget this step. Once you get the moles of your conjugate, you need to get it into concentration. Big thing that you cannot forget. Now that we know the concentration here of our conjugate that formed, we can do our ice table. Realize what's happening here at the equivalence point. All the uh, weak acid and strong base are gone because uh, you're at the equivalence point. The moles of uh, acid equal the moles of base at the equivalence point. So they're gone. 
So the uh, sodium acetate that formed, part of the sodium acetate that formed, is going to hydrolyze with water here to contribute the pH to the pH. So the C2H3O2 minus part is going to be hydrolyzing here with water. Remember, it's in equilibrium because it's a hydrolysis reaction to form HC2H3O2 plus the OH minus. We knew this needed to be a basic pH, so the minus part of the salt hydrolyzing with water to give us that OH minus. So now that we have the concentration, we can plug this into our ice table. We know the initial concentration of our conjugate here. We know that both of the products are going to be zero. So you really need to think this through. The acid and the base from the original titration are gone because we're at the equivalence point. So the salt formed, but part of that salt is going to hydrolyze here with water and contribute to the pH. We're not going to be neutral uh, at our equivalence point for a weak, strong prop. Now we're ready to plug in our change. Reactants are going to be used up, so they're negative X. Products are going to be formed, so they are positive X. Now we can plug in our equilibrium concentrations here. So I plug in my equilibrium concentrations, and now I'm ready to actually plug in to my uh, KB expression here. Be very careful with this. This is where people mess up. All right, I didn't you know, show this to save a little bit of time, but realize you formed OH minus. So you're going to write a KB expression for this equilibrium. Problem is, in the problem, you were only given KA. So you have to use KA times KB being equal to KW to solve for your uh, KB here. So once you have the KB, now you can actually go and plug that in to your KB uh, expression here to solve for X. It is going to be an X approximation problem. Again, I just crossed it out here in the table to remind you that it would be an X approximation uh, problem here. Just keep that in mind that we're going to be able to do that for one of these weak, strong problems. Now that I have KB and I plug my equilibrium values here into my uh, KB expression, again, you should be showing all this work, but because we've done it before, I'm kind of just trying to save a little bit of time here. Uh, you plug that in, you solve for X, do your X approximation. When you solve for X, you get the concentration of your OH minus to be 5.3 times 10 to the minus six. Uh, remember here, this is the OH minus. So you're going to be finding a POH. Uh, POH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus. So when you do that, you get 5.28. If you stopped here, you know you'd be wrong. If you thought this was your pH, you know it doesn't make sense because it's in the acidic region. And we know we need to be in the base region, all right? So now you have to do, uh, or now you have to get the pH from this. We know pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So 14 minus uh, your pOH gives you 8.72. This makes sense. This pH uh, at the equivalence point here is in the basic region, which is what we would expect. So you just got to remember here that at the equivalence point, you're going to have a part of your salt hydrolyzing with water to give you your pH. And you need to think about this right? Am I doing a weak acid, strong base, or a weak base, strong acid? Where is that pH going to be? Do I need to form H plus with the hydrolysis of the salt, or do I need to form OH minus? And then you plug into your ice table. Remember, you need the concentration here of that conjugate, not plugging in just moles. But we've seen these problems. This is just a hydrolysis here with a salt. So this is not like it's a totally new problem. You just have to kind of understand how to apply this in these weak, strong titration problems. At the equivalence point, you're going to need to do one of these uh, hydrolysis here reactions with part of the salt. We still have one more region here of the curve to look at for one of these weak, strong titration problems. We have to look at how you'd find the pH after the equivalence point. The good news is of the four regions, this is probably the easiest because after the equivalence point, all the weak acid is gone. So now you keep adding, in this case, strong base. So it's just going to be a strong problem, which makes it a little bit easier. You've basically seen these steps already before in a strong, strong problem. So after you've gone past the equivalence point, again, if you weren't sure if you were after the equivalence point, you would quickly see that when you did your calculation here of your moles of base that you added and the moles of acid that you started with. You would see 
that you've added many more moles than the number of moles of acid that you started with. Uh, so basic gist, you're going to need to find the moles of NaOH you added, find the number of moles of acid you started with. You'll see that the number of moles of NaOH is more. You'll subtract the two to figure out how many moles of NaOH are left over. Well, because this is now strong, all right, we're at the point where we're past the equivalence point. All that's left over is the strong that you're adding. It makes it very easy to determine the concentration here of your OH minus, and then you can do a POH and then get to POH. So of all the regions of a weak strong problem, this is probably the most familiar to you, and it's probably the easiest because all that's left is, in this case, a strong base. So if we're doing this after we added 40 milliliters of NaOH, we can quickly calculate the number of moles of NaOH we added. We've seen this before. Uh, we know how many moles of the uh, weak acid we started with. You can clearly see here that you've gone past the equivalence point because you've added more base than acid that you started with. So I know now, if you didn't know before, you would quickly know, okay, I'm after the equivalence point and the only thing left over here is NaOH when I do my subtracting. So subtract uh, the number of moles of acid that you started with from the number of moles of the base that you added. And you'll quickly see here that you have um, 0 0.0015 moles of NaOH in excess. So that's how many moles of NaOH now that you have, uh, but that's floating around in a new volume again of 65 milliliters, 40 plus the 25. So you need to get this to concentration. In order to do pH, you must be in concentration, not moles. So get to liters, moles over liters. This is the concentration of your OH minus. Realize that's the concentration of your NaOH, but because it's strong and 100% associated one-to-one -one ratio, that's also the concentration of the OH minus. So now we're going to do a pOH here because we have the concentration of OH minus, negative log of the concentration of OH minus. I get 1.64. Again, if you stopped here thinking you were in pH, you should immediately catch that this doesn't make sense because this would be in the acidic uh, region. And we know that we have strong base left over. This should be uh, very basic. So we have to now find the pH. We know pH plus pOH equals 14. So 14 minus our pOH gives us the pH being 12.36 at this point. And this answer makes sense because it's well into the basic region of the pH scale. Uh, and that's all that was left here was the strong base. So now you've seen what to do for all the different areas here of a weak, strong problem. And you definitely need to know what to do at each of the regions. And you need to know this is what you do for a weak, strong and how it's different from a strong, strong problem. You've got to be really good with both types here of these titrations. Obviously, if a strong acid is added to a weak base here instead, um, it's going to be a little bit different. Everything's going to kind of be opposite. All right. Instead of starting in the acidic region, you're going to be starting in the basic region. Uh, so that might switch up whether you have a pOH or a pH. But the ideas here, the regions are going to be the same. You're going to have to do an ice table uh, for the initial because it's weak. You're going to have um, that buffering zone up to the equivalence point. Once you start adding uh, your strong acid at the equivalence point, you're going to have a hydrolysis here of your salt. And then after the equivalence point, you're only going to have strong remaining. Obviously, the curve would look different as well. Very quickly here, I just want to mention these polyprotic acid titrations. Remember, these polyprotic acids have more than one ionizable hydrogen here. So if you're doing a titration with this, you need to realize that these neutralization reactions would occur in steps because we have multiple hydrogens. So the curve itself would actually have multiple equivalence points here, one for each of the hydrogens. So if you're looking at this particular graph, this is for H3PO3. So the first equivalence point here would be right here. That's when your first uh, hydrogen kind of is ionized. Well, then you would see the second equivalence point, the second jump, if you continued the titration here, that's when the uh, second hydrogen is ionized. And then the graph would even have to keep going and you'd see another jump 
another equivalence point for the third hydrogen. So just realize if you see anything like this, the reason why you see multiple equivalence points is because it's probably um, one of these polyprotic acids. And based on the number of equivalence points, you could determine how many ionizable hydrogens a particular acid has. This curve is showing you again another polyprotic acid titration, just pointing out a few things here. Remember, if you're looking at this, we can see here the first equivalence point, the midpoint here of the first equivalence point right here. So that means you added one moles of NaOH in this case. So if you wanted to get to the half equivalence point, to get to the equivalence point, it took one mole. Uh, so half of that would be 0.5. You would quickly see at 0.5, this would be, uh, at this point, you have the pH. If you cruise over and figure out the pH, you would know the pKa there. All right. Remember, at the half equivalence point, the pH at that point is equal to the pKa of your acid. So you'd be able to figure out um, the pKa here, and then you could do K, you could get the K of that just by looking at one of these titration curves. By knowing how much it took to get to the equivalence point, half of that value gets you to your half equivalence point. And then if you know the pH at that point, you know the pKa. And that would apply for all the different equivalence points that you see on this uh, polyprotic acid titration curve. Keep in mind here that if you remember, for every one of these um, ionizations for each of the hydrogens, the Ka always gets smaller each time. So if you notice the acid is getting weaker, the equivalence point is going to be smaller, okay, for each one. So notice here, pretty big jump for the equivalence point, but then the next time you lose a hydrogen, all right, we've essentially made the acid weaker here. Uh, the Ka is going to get smaller, so the equivalence point is not that much. So I just want you to see a couple of those things here from this curve, uh, understanding you will see um, multiple equivalence points here for one of these polyprotic acid titrations. So this is just a summary of how to find the pH along the different intervals for a weak, strong titration problem. Uh, remember here, if you're asked to calculate the pH initially, you're going to have to do an equilibrium problem with an ice table because this is a weak acid or a weak base, and these do not dissociate 100%. Therefore, you're going to need to use an ice table to figure out the pH. At any point after the initial up into the equivalence point, uh, this is a buffering region because you have a weak acid or base and its conjugate present. So you would actually have to determine the concentration of the weak, determine the concentration of the conjugate that formed, and then plug these values into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Um, if you're at the equivalence point, this is where you need to figure out the concentration of the conjugate salt that formed and use an ice table with the hydrolysis reaction. Remember, this is not a strong, strong titration, uh, so you're not generating a salt that would be neutral at the equivalence point. Uh, because this salt was from a you know weak acid, strong base, or a weak base, strong acid type, uh, whatever the strong is in the problem, that's going to determine where your pH is going to be and how your salt is going to hydrolyze at the equivalence point. Um, and then at any point after the equivalence point, uh, it, you're going to have strong acid or base remaining. So that's just a quick figure out the concentration and solve for uh, pH using negative log of the concentration of H plus or negative log of the concentration of OH minus. So it's very important that you understand how to calculate the pH along the different intervals. It's also very important that you understand uh, the graphs themselves. In this particular graph, uh, this would be a weak base being titrated with a strong acid. Uh, so you can see here, again, note the differences. Uh, initially, it's not going to be as basic because this is a weak base. Uh, at the equivalence point, you can see here that it's not at 7. It is lower than 7 in this case. Um, and then these are things that you have to watch out for. Uh, and without this stuff even being labeled, you could clearly see that this was not a strong, strong titration just from uh, where the uh, equivalence point is in this particular titration.
All right, so let's do an example here. Um, and as you can see from this particular problem, we are adding some sodium hydroxide to 40 milliliters of benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is a weak acid. So we have the benzoic acid would be in the flask and the sodium hydroxide would be in the burette being added to it. So this is a weak acid being titrated with a strong base type problem. So before we actually go through here and do the problem, remember it's very important to write the overall equation here for this reaction. So we have some sodium hydroxide, all right, reacting with the benzoic acid. Remember for an acid-base neutralization reaction, we see a forward arrow here and we typically generate a salt plus water for these types of neutralization reactions. So there's our salt plus water. And remember, this salt is going to be important. When we get to the equivalence point, we are not doing a strong, strong type of problem. So uh, when the moles of acid equal moles of base, uh, the salt here is actually going to be able to hydrolyze with water. And because this came from a uh, weak acid strong base, the base is stronger, we would expect this to hydrolyze uh, at the equivalence point to give us a pH greater than 7. Uh, so that's coming up later on, but always take note of the salt in a weak strong problem because um, that's how we get a pH that's different from 7. Uh, so to do the initial pH of the solution here, we have to remember that the weak acid present initially um, is there in the flask and we have to actually do an ice table to figure out its pH because it is a weak acid. So we have the uh, benzoic acid here initially in equilibrium with its ions. Okay, so remember here pay attention to the arrows in the equilibrium. Uh, notice the difference between the neutralization reaction forward arrow versus uh, the weak acid uh, in equilibrium with its ions. So for our ice table here, we know the initial concentration of the acetic acid is 0.025 molar. We know that these ions are not present initially. This is going to lose some value of X. These both are going to gain some values of X. So we know our equilibrium values here by completing our table. All right, so uh, from this, we can write our Ka. We know the Ka for this particular equilibrium will be equal to the products over reactants. Okay, so we can fill this out. This is stuff we should be pretty good at by now. Uh, products all over our benzoic acid. Okay, so in the problem, they gave us the value of the Ka to be 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. Plug in what we know from our uh, ice table. It's going to be x squared. Both of the products are x, uh, 0 0.025 minus x for the reactant concentration. Remember, we can do the approximation here. And when we solve this for x, we get X being equal to 0 0.0012 molar. Um, remember from our ice table, X is actually the concentration of the H+. Plus. Um, so now that we know the concentration of H+, plus, we can go ahead and solve for the pH. So pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H+. Plus. So the pH would be equal to the negative log of 0. 0012, which would be equal to uh, 2.92 here. All right, so anytime you're asked to calculate the pH initially, remember this is a weak acid or base, so you have to actually go through and set up an ice table in order to find it. Part B now actually asks us to solve here um, for the pH after 10 milliliters of the NaOH has been added, okay? So remember, in a weak strong titration problem, any point from the initial pH up into the equivalence point, you have a buffer. 
So we have to actually go through this problem. We don't know if we're at the equivalence point yet or not. So we have to actually go through and see how much base we added here and compare it to the amount of acid we started with. Okay, so I know that initially here, I started with 40 milliliters of my benzoic acid. So we got to get this to liters here so that I can use my concentration to figure out how many moles of benzoic acid that I started with. So I have 0 0.025 moles here of the acid, all right, uh, for every liter. And when I calculate this, I had 0 0.0010 moles of acid that I was starting with. All right, so that's how many moles of acid I started with in the flask. Uh, in this particular part, I added 10 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to get this to liters so that I can figure out how many moles here were in that much. I have 0 0.050 moles of the base for every liter. So I added 0 0.00050 moles of the base. All right, so I can quickly see here that I did not reach the equivalence point. I added some base to neutralize the acid, but not enough to actually neutralize all of it. So I have to realize here that this is going to create a buffer. Okay, I have, I'm after the initial pH, but I have not reached the equivalence point. This is the buffer zone of a weak, strong titration problem. So uh, we can quickly figure out how much acid we have left. We uh, started with 0 0.0010 moles. We are going to add and basically destroy this many moles of the acid from the base. Remember, again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio when we wrote our balanced equation for the overall reaction. So if I add that much base, that's how much acid um, I'm going to react and destroy here. So I now have 0 0.0005 moles of the acid left. Okay, but remember here now, um, in this particular problem, if that's how much acid that I essentially destroyed, this is a one-to-one -one ratio type of problem. Um, I also now formed that amount, the 0 0.00050 moles of the conjugate. Okay, so... Very important to understand here that this particular part of a weak, strong problem is a buffer. The definition of a buffer is when you have a weak acid or base and it's conjugate present. If you remember back to the equation, we generated some of that salt, some of that conjugate here um, that is going to allow us to form this buffer. All right. So. Now that we know how many moles of acid and moles of the conjugate we formed, uh, we have to actually go through and figure out the concentration of these. So the acid has not been neutralized, so there's some weak acid present, and we have generated the conjugate in this particular reaction, and there's a certain moles of that now. So we have to take that into account as we do our buffer. So as we already figured out here, we uh, still have 0 0.0005 moles of my acid still remaining, but it's now floating in 50 milliliters total of solution. We started with 40 milliliters, we added 10 milliliters, so it's a total of 50 milliliters. So we can convert this to liters, there's a thousand mils for every liter and this will give me the concentration of the acid that I still have remaining okay so it's 0 0.01 molar and I'm gonna label this this is my concentration of my weak acid all right but remember here now you also uh, generated um, a certain amount of the conjugate 
here. So we have 0 0.00050 moles of the conjugate that we formed. And this is floating around in the same 50 milliliters. We can convert that here to liters. And the concentration of the conjugate at this particular point would also be 0 .00, sorry, 0 0.01 molar. And that's the concentration of the conjugate base that I formed here. So remember, I have a weak acid and it's conjugate present. That's the definition of the buffer. So I have to figure out the concentration of each. And now that I know the concentration of each currently present, I can uh, plug this into the henderson hasselbach equation and actually figure out what the pH will be. So before I can use that equation, I need the pKa. Remember, pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka. So uh, the pKa here is going to be equal to the negative log of the 6.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. So my pKa ends up being equal to 4.20. So uh, we are using the pH version here of the henderson hasselbach equation because we have a weak acid in its conjugate. So that's going to be equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base or the conjugate all over the concentration of the acid. All right, so the pH will be equal to 4.20 plus the log of 0 .0, 0 0.01 and the concentration of 0 0.01 on the bottom. So um, this ends up being equal to 4.2 with correct sig figs here. Um, so the reason why this was starred is because if you didn't realize it, you were actually at the half equivalence point here. Uh, you had a certain moles of acid, and we added or neutralized half of that amount. Uh, so we know at the um, half equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa. So if you didn't realize it, you just go through and solve the problem, and you get the same answer. But if you, if you were able to realize that you could quickly uh, solve the problem, realizing that you had the pH being equal to the pKa. But it's very important to be able to go through and actually solve for the buffering region here of a weak, strong titration problem. All right, so now we're ready to go on and solve part C after 20 milliliters of the base was added. So this time now... I have 20 milliliters of the base added. I need to figure out how many moles of that were added. So I know there's a thousand mils for every liter, and I know the concentration of my sodium hydroxide is 0 0.050 moles okay, of my base. That's per liter. So I added 0 0.0010 moles of base, okay, I already calculated uh, earlier here how many moles of acid I started with, and at this point, we are now at the equivalence point, okay, because the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base, and that's the definition of the equivalence point, okay, so I added enough base to completely neutralize the acid, okay? So in a strong, strong problem, the pH would be automatically 7. Uh, but that's not the case here for a weak, strong problem, okay? Remember here, we said that we are doing a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. We would expect the salt that is generated okay, in this reaction, to hydrolyze with water at the equivalence point to produce a pH that is more basic because it was from a weak acid and a strong base. So we would expect here the pH at the equivalence point to be greater than 7, okay? So we know now that if we added 
that many moles of base, this is a one-to-one -one ratio from our reaction that we wrote, that there's going to be that much, that exact amount of the conjugate salt formed. So we now have 0 0.0010 moles of the conjugate salt here being generated in this reaction. So the acid was neutralized, okay, uh, but we generated um, that much of the conjugate salt because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So in order to actually figure out the pH here, we are going to need to do an ice table. The part of the conjugate is going to hydrolyze with water, but we need the concentration. It's very important to remember that you know the moles of the conjugate salts here, but you're going to need the concentration of that. So I know that we form 0 0.0010 moles of the conjugate salt, and it's now floating around in 60 milliliters. Okay, we started with 40 milliliters, we added 20 milliliters, so it's floating around in 60 milliliters. There's a thousand milliliters for every liter, and we know the concentration of the conjugate is 0 0.017 molar, and that's my concentration here of my conjugate salt. Okay, so um, remember here from our original equation. All right, we have to generate a base, so it's going to be the anion part of the salt that formed that's going to hydrolyze with water to generate me OH minus. So you have to write this equation here. We have the C7H5O2 minus, the anion part of the salt, reacting with water at the equivalence point. It's going to hydrolyze, it's going to be in equilibrium to form the benzoic acid, okay, plus OH minus. That's how we're going to get a more basic pH here at the equivalence point. We have to generate OH minus. So think about that. If you know it has to be a uh, basic pH, you want the part of the salt that's going to hydrolyze with water, okay, to generate OH minus. Okay, we don't want to generate an H plus here. We want to generate an OH minus because we know it has to be more basic. So that's why we need the anion part of the salt to react or hydrolyze with the water here. Okay, so we can create our ice table real quick. Uh, we know the initial concentration because we just found it. We know that water does not participate in the ice table because it's a liquid. Both of the products were zero initially. This is going to change, lose some value of x. These both are going to add some value of x. So this is going to be 0 0.017 uh, minus x molar at equilibrium. Both of these are just going to be x molar at equilibrium. Okay, so we figured out the concentration of the uh, conjugate salt that formed. And we wrote a hydrolysis reaction that generated, okay, the OH minus because we knew we wanted to be at a more basic pH because that salt came from a weak acid and a strong base. So we're at the equivalence point. The uh, moles of acid equal moles of base. So the acid is completely neutralized, but we generated a salt that is going to hydrolyze and give us a more basic pH. So we set up our ice table. And now we actually have to go through and find the pH. So because we generated OH minus here, we actually need a Kb. So we know that Ka times Kb is equal to Kw, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so if we want to solve here, um, for a Kb, we take 1 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by the Ka that they gave us, 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5th. And this is equal to the Kb, which would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, remember, we need a Kb here because we formed an OH minus. So if we write our Kb expression, Kb is equal to the products over reactants here. Okay, and our reactant here 
All right, concentration of the C7H5O2 minus on the bottom. All right, so there's my KB expression. I can plug in what I know. Uh, we just found the KB to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Um, that's going to be equal to x squared. Both of the products in the ice, ice table were x. We have on the bottom 0 0.017 minus x. The x on the bottom there is negligible, so it can be crossed out. And when you solve this for x, you get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6th molar, because this is a concentration. But remember, x in your ice table represents the concentration of OH minus here. This is not H plus, this is OH minus, because that's what we generated. So we can find the POH, which is equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus. So the negative log of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 is equal to 5.80. So that's the POH. We know that pH plus POH is equal to 14. 14 minus 5.80 gives us a uh, final pH here of 8.20. And this should make sense. It is above 7. It is more basic, which is what we expect for this weak acid strong base titration. We are not at a pH of 7 at the equivalence point. Part D now wants us to figure out the pH after 35 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide has been added. So I can quickly figure out how many moles of the base I added. So this time I added 35 milliliters. There's 1,000 milliliters for every liter. And I know the concentration was 0 0.050 moles of base for every liter. And I added 0 0.00175 moles of OH minus, or just the base itself. This is how much I added, okay? So we already know how much acid we started with. We already know that, you know, we've reached our equivalence point when we added 20 milliliters. So we know here that we're past the equivalence point, okay? So I... I know that all of the acid is going to be completely neutralized, and I'm going to have just base left over. So I added 0 0.00175 moles. I started with 0 0.0010 moles of the acid. Okay, so this is the moles of acid started with. So um, the acid is completely neutralized and completely gone. All right, and this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So because of that, we know we have 0 0.00075 moles of my base left over here. So we've actually added base in excess. Um, this is, though, now a strong base. This was sodium hydroxide, so it's 100% dissociated. So if we can figure out the concentration of the base that's left here, we can quickly find the pH. So I have 0 0.00075 moles of the base, and this is now floating around in a grand total of 75 milliliters of solution. Started with 40 milliliters, added 35 milliliters to it, so it's 75 milliliters. We know that there's 1,000 milliliters for every liter, so the concentration here is 0 0, 0.010 0 molar, and this is the concentration of OH minus. Remember, this is NaOH, it's a strong base. That is the concentration of the base itself, and because uh, NaOH has one Na plus for every one OH minus, uh, if you know the concentration of the NaOH itself, you know the concentration of the OH minus. Uh, so this is the concentration of the OH minus, so this would give us a POH, POH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus, so the negative log of the 0 0.010 equals 2.00.
well, pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So 14 minus 2.00 gives us a final pH here of 12.00. Okay, so uh, this is how you go through and solve for the different intervals of a weak, strong problem. Remember, you have to pay attention to uh, which part you're in. There's certain steps you must do if it's initial or if you're in the buffering region or if you're at the equivalence point or if you're after the equivalence point. So remember, this was for a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. Uh, if it was reversed, it's basically the same steps, but you have to pay attention to whether you have an acid or a base and you know, you're solving for a pH or a pOH. So that's how you do one of these weak, strong titration problems.